Okay. They're all possible. Knowing the velocity at one point tells you zero about how it's changing. Knowing the energy of this table tells you nothing at all about how it's changing. Maybe it's heating up by putting my hands on it. Maybe I've just thrown ice on it. It's cooling off. Knowing the, knowing the physical property of some object, like its velocity vector, doesn't tell you how it's changing at all. If the change is, if the acceleration vector, and so the change in velocity is to the right, what is, what's, what's a common word for what that object is doing? It's moving to the right, and its velocity vector is changing to the right. How would you describe that? Speeding up. How about number two? It's moving to the right, and its change is to the left. Well, that's once you've got speeding up, slowing down ought to be, ought to be straightforward. Now the funny ones. Number three, if it's moving to the right, and, uh, and this is the velocity vector right now, and its change is that way, what's that car doing? It's turning. It's turning to the left. And by, I shouldn't even say left. It's turning toward the upper part, toward upward, toward up the page. If I'm in the car and I'm the one that's going in that direction, then uh, a vector this way is, a, is turning to the left. So if I'm in the car and I'm doing, and it's number, th and uh, the, correct acceleration vectors number three, then I feel like I'm turning to the left. And then number four is turning to the right. Cars can change direction, they can speed up, they can slow down. Just because you know the velocity vector doesn't mean you know what happens next. Any questions on that one? Yeah. So if that was the change in velocity, then you would be able to down? Would you be able to know what's happening? Um, the acceleration, the acceleration vector is just the change in velocity vector divided by some time. So to know the acceleration vector is almost the same as knowing the change in velocity. Those are close to being the same thing. It's the rate of change of velocity. And so, if I said those were d changes in velocity, the answer would be the same. Because it can be changing its velocity in any direction. And that's all acceleration is. Changing of velocity. In fact, it's the, st strictly speaking, it's the rate of change of the velocity. Any other questions? Yeah. The first one? Yeah. I, speeding up is a change. If the object is speeding up, then its velocity vector, which I have drawn up there, is maybe this long, its velocity vector is getting longer. Because the magnitude of the velocity vector, the length of the velocity vector, tells you the speed. So if it's speeding up, then its velocity vector is getting longer and longer. If the velocity vector is this big, and it's changing in that direction, the same direction that it's pointing, then the velocity vector is getting longer and longer. So it's speeding up. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but. Well, just because the top arrow looks longer to me, so that's why I thought it was confusing, I guess. Um, so, so these arrows are acceleration vectors. They tell you how the velocity is changing. And, and this is a velocity vector. And because those have different units, those are, the magnitudes of those are, are not comparable in any way because they have different units. These acceleration vectors, because they all have the same units, all have comparable magnitudes. I mean, I can say, well, I think I've drawn them all to have the same magnitude, although four looks a little bigger, but anyway. I, th I thought that I, they all had the same magnitude, but just different directions. 
And so the magnitude of the velocity vector can't, you, you can't compare that to the magnitude of, of the acceleration vector, for instance, because those are different objects, different units, and a different physical meaning. The acceleration vector tells you how the velocity vector is changing. The acceleration vector can be big when the velocity is zero. If the velocity is changing a lot, like if it was moving really fast upward and later on it moves really fast downward, the acceleration vector, it can be changing even at the top when the, when the velocity is zero if later on it's in a different direction. I'm going to write this. I guess I should remind you that the velocity vector was the rate of change of the position vector back a few weeks ago. The velocity vector is the rate of change of the position vector. The acceleration vector is the rate of change of the velocity vector. In fact, that's how those are, those are a similar kind of relation between, between these as you step through this. And so the, the x component, the only way the vectors can be equal is if the x components are equal. So to say v is, del is, is uh, delta r delta t, I'm going to write this as a derivative. I should have written it as a derivative a long time ago probably, but I, I felt like not doing that right away. Um, the x component of the velocity is it's a derivative of a graph x of t, the slope of a graph x of t, or it's the rate of change of the x component of the object. X is the x component of its position vector. This x component might change with time, and so that's the graph that's shown here. And the same is true for, for the acceleration vector. You can just write the x component as the time derivative of the x component of the velocity. And, and because those are derivatives, I, I want you to think about derivatives a little bit. Uh, if I show you the position, the, an object's x position, the x component of its location, of its uh, position vector, is graphed to the right as a function of time. So it's, its x component may be changing with time. If it is changing with time, then that just means it's moving. And I'd like you to figure out which of the following best describes the x component of its velocity as a function of time. Given this, this idea that the velocity is just the time rate of change of the position. 